What's up guys, Derek, more plates, more dates.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about the point of a test base. So I've talked a bit in the past about the uh, importance of estrogen, the misconceptions around the test base. I wanted to just break down in a brief summation what the point of it is. So it's one of the most misunderstood concepts in the community, in my opinion, is the use of the testosterone base. So, you know, for years, you've probably heard through the forums, through your buddies at the gym, through blah, blah, blah testosterone needs to be the base of every single cycle and logically this makes sense on the surface we naturally produce it so if you're shutting yourself down via exogenous you know hormone use logically you would think i have to replace what is gone but that's as far as anyone really goes with that insight no one really looks further than that and they just assume that's the end of the story and that was as far as anyone really would really explain the test base they would just say oh well you don't have it in your body because you're shut down so you need to replace it no one really explained what mechanism is really fulfilling that is not filled via any other androgen or any other anabolic steroid, I should say more accurately. So at a higher level, despite the fact that a test base is still something that will be beneficial for the vast majority of anabolic androgenic steroid users, it's important to understand why it's there to begin with if you're literally going to be injecting yourself with something so why like why couldn't you do an oral only cycle why is that you know frowned upon most guys are just gonna say it's because you need the test it's like whoa fuck like why do i need the fucking test you know so the main reason you need testosterone is not just to activate androgen receptors and transcribe anabolic and androgenic effects in tissues which is you know what you would expect but <laughs> it's that it aromatizes into estrogen which is often completely overlooked and fulfills a myriad of other physiologic functions that will go unfulfilled should you, you know, move forward with like a DHT derivative only cycle or a, you know, something else that just does not satisfy that pathway. So only in recent years, I'd say, like maybe the past few, has the importance of adequate estrogen levels been highlighted. And, you know, even by experts in the community for years, you know, we thought estrogen was the devil. Uh, even in the past, I thought the sweet spot was like, you know, 30 picograms is kind of like what I always shot for in the past. But in reality, you know, my stance on it has sort of changed and I'm a bit more lenient on letting it you know, rise accordingly when androgen levels in the body are rising too. It only makes sense that when you get to super physiologic territory of androgens, you need a super physiologic amount of estrogen to balance that out, to maintain, you know, neuroprotection, cardiotoxicity prevention, all these things that are going to be mediated by a balance of androgen to estrogen in the body. And at the end of the day, are often overlooked entirely. And it's even that's not even just a TRT context where people think they have this preconceived notion about where exactly your estrogen needs to be to be you know optimized when it's often a more individual dependent thing based on sex hormone metabolism and a bunch of other stuff but though getting too off track i would say little consideration was really given for the ratio of androgens to estrogen in the body and the fat loss and growth factor inhibiting effect unnecessarily um, lowering estrogen in the body can have and the massive impact it also has on lipid modulation a lot of people don't realize how big of an impact estrogen levels have on your hdl levels so a lot of people think it's the steroids are killing your hdl and it's like yeah but a lot of times people are crushing their hdl unnecessarily with aromatase inhibitors as well or by you know using estrogen management tactics that may otherwise not be uh conducive to their overall health as well as performance and um the clinical data also suggests how neuroprotective and cardioprotective testosterone is relative to other androgens but often fails to acknowledge and this is the shortcomings of tons of the clinical studies in my opinion if they completely fail to take into account and i guess basically state in a clear way that these effects are not necessarily mediated by testosterone but more so by the estrogen as a result of sufficient aromatization give a guy any drug that suppresses you know, testosterone production to nearly zero, and you're going to see a spike in neurotoxicity and cardiotoxicity in the body. And creating a therapeutic amount of estradiol has shown to attenuate this to a significant extent. And it's not necessarily that like often people think that testosterone, oh, it'll go into the brain and protect your brain, but it's mediated through this aromatization to the estrogen itself, not inherent through the, you know, the literal androgen testosterone, which is, you know, often overlooked and creating a therapeutic amount of estradiol in the body is facilitated via testosterone aromatizing into estrogen as you probably already know and this is where 
many of the anabolic steroids fall short in regards to a you know potential monotherapy option for long-term hormone replacement therapy alternatives or for you know using as a cycle for you know being a I guess a alternative to testosterone or in lack of, you know, without having any testosterone there as a base necessarily. So, you know, there are steroids that convert to estrogen in the body or act on estrogen receptors inherently, but comparing them to testosterone, I feel like none of them really stack up in regards to checking off all the boxes. It's not like they can't mediate this, but the balancing act in the body is very closely regulated and nothing can really simulate exactly what testosterone does in the exact ratios it does. So we have things like Dianabol. What's the drawback of Dianabol? It aromatizes into 7-alpha-methyl-estradiol, not straight estradiol, so it's a lot more unpredictable, and it is inherently hepatotoxic. So obviously as a long-term monotherapy option and as a, you know, a short-term cycle, it's not something you you know, contrary to popular belief, the D-ball only cycle isn't as stupid as we once thought in the past. However, is it a total replacement for testosterone and an optimal way of going about, you know, fulfilling that pathway? I would argue no. Then you have things like EQ, boldenone. It's a very poor substrate for aromatase though, and is incredibly kidney toxic from what I've seen relative to testosterone. So I wouldn't even consider that at all. Although some people do have, you know, fair success with it. I just for the effect that has on so many other pathways in a negative way relative to testosterone for the you know it's not like it's that very tissue selective anyways i just wouldn't even consider it trest alone is something that's interesting to look at it aromatizes into 7 alpha methyl estradiol so not to be confused with 17 alpha methyl estradiol but 7 alpha methyl estradiol and you know could potentially be looked at as a test-based alternative but nailing the dosing is something that no one has really done properly yet a lot of people think It needs to be run at like 200, 300 milligrams plus, when in reality, if you look at the clinical data, the amount of the milligram to milligram amount to fulfill the same energetic activity relative to testosterone and the same anabolic activity, the ratios are just like way off of what people are doing. So it's also very unpredictable and likely not something that is a viable strategy based on the current data we have. So while it is promising, I don't think it is a you know, an alternative. I think it just lags. I don't think it can't be done. I just think it lags behind bioidentical testosterone that we know. I'm not saying, and again, let me clarify, it's not like none of these things can work. It's just like in a health performance, you know, everything context and, you know, potential monotherapy for HRT, all these things. I just, nothing really stacks up to testosterone in my opinion. And nandrolone, another, you know, potential alternative. Very poor substrate for aromatase, unfortunately. Does act on estrogen receptors inherently and, you know, has a bit of an ability to increase estrogen levels. Unfortunately, it's mostly through estrone and estradiol. It's, you know, barely produced with it and also very unpredictable and is very hit or miss with its activity on the progesterone receptor and the sort of anti-androgenic effect it can have for some people in a libido context. Again, it's kind of just like, at the end of the day, there's nothing that really replaces testosterone fully. And while certain, like I said, certain steroids can activate estrogen receptors or aromatize into estrogen themselves, none of them really fit the bill as far as having a perfect balancing act in all aspects like bioidentical testosterone does, which is why the testosterone base is, you know, a staple for decades and will probably continue to be hereafter because... It is literally what we produce and have shown to, you know, thrive on. So, you know, messing with that is kind of like, I wouldn't say it's dumb because I do that all the time. That's literally the point of my experiments. But, you know, just for the sake of explaining the point of the test base, it's literally the bioidentical androgen that we, you know, rely on. And our body has very tightly regulated homeostatic mechanisms to balance out the androgen to estrogen ratio and have everything sort of work in tandem to have a perfect balancing act for performance and longevity. Yeah, you know, that's obviously this is not accounting for androgenic side effects that somebody may be prone to or an increased, uh, you know, polymorphism for increased aromatization relative to the average person that results in gyno even at HRT doses or something like that or, you know, somebody who has lifestyle practices or that are not conducive to handling testosterone well, they're too fat, they have poor administration you know, frequency slash practices, 
um, poor diet. There's like a million things that can contribute to testosterone not being conducive to somebody's, you know, state of well-being and quality of life. But at the end of the day, I just think, you know, like in general, that is the point of the test base. It's basically to fulfill androgen receptor activation that would be accomplished via it's like what your body literally knows exactly what to do with and it also has very tightly regulated mechanisms to aromatize into estrogen and provide the you know neuroprotection cardio protection all these things that are mediated through that perfectly you know balanced pathway at therapeutic levels so that's it thank you guys for watching please like subscribe check out my blog moreplatesmoredates.com follow me on instagram at moreplates underscore more dates facebook snapchat twitter tiktok bit shoot etc subscribe to the newsletter link in the description below if you want to get notified anytime i put out an article they're always far more concise and professionally laid out than these videos where i just ramble like crazy and they're you know broken down with table of contents have uh clinical references cited that you can delve into further yourself you're only going to get those articles if you sign up to the mailing list in the first link in the description below so highly recommend you guys do that talk to you soon